A one, two, three, four. Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me in today's video. Uh, and by the way, yes, I am wearing a University of North Texas shirt. I did not go there. My middle son goes there. Just felt like representing a little bit today. But in today's video, we're going to talk about something a little jazzier. <laughs> Hence the North Texas shirt. Um, so a little bit jazzier. And this is the idea. Some people would call this a 2-5 turnaround. It's not really technically a turnaround because the turnaround is really the last two bars of a blues, but some people call the last four bars a turnaround. So I guess theoretically you could look at it either way. I've always considered the last two bars to be the turnaround officially. But that being said, a lot of people, the last four bars are the turnaround. And so what we're going to be talking about is something that happens in bars 9 and 10 of the 12 bar blues form. So if we're in the key of G, <clears throat> we are going, that's our one chord, right? And so the first four bars of 12 bar blues, that's the one chord. Now we can add in a quick change. It doesn't really affect anything. The quick change means that we play the four chord for the second bar. So that's the first four bars. Bars five and six, we go to the four chord. Bars seven and eight, we go back to the one chord, G in this case, right? C being four. D is five. And normally that's where you would go when bar five, uh, bar nine comes around. But instead of going five in bar nine, four in bar 10, we're going to go to the two, which is A minor. And you could play that like as an A minor seven, as an A minor. Okay, bar chord A minor. A minor seven is a nice one. And this is basically a bar across everything and your third finger goes on the seventh fret of the um, of the fifth string, barring everything at the fifth fret. One way that I like to play it, uh, and this is a really common, I'll say jazz voicing, is to use the third finger or maybe some combination of third and fourth fingers to get the fifth fret at the second, third, and fourth string while you get your root note down here on the uh, on the sixth string and you just don't play the fifth string of the first string and you know if you're playing in a band you don't need that low note all you would need is that much or you could play like an a minor nine or you could have the seven there or you could do like a ninth kind of thing there's a lot of options there but let's just keep it simple a minor right or a minor seven so instead of five to four we're going to be two to five so we're going to go from that A minor to a D7 or a D9. And then the last two bars, we're going to play one chord and five chord. Now that's not the only option. And it's not uncommon for this to come along with a one, six, two, five in the last two bars, but I'm not, I don't want to get too carried away in one video. Let's just keep it simple. So again, we have the one chord for four bars. The four chord for two bars, same as always. Back to the one chord for two bars. But then we go to the two, to the five, back to the one, and then usually the five at the end. And there you go. That's the whole progression, okay? Now, fairly simple. And usually, if you get on a bandstand, I've always heard people say, you know, this song has a two, five, one turnaround. Great, everybody kind of knows what you mean. Or this has a two five instead of the five to four. That's another way that you can call it that's gonna make it pretty, you know, uh, it, it should be very clear. If you say instead of five to four, it's two to five. Everybody should know what you mean, okay? Um, but if you have trouble with it, you can say bars nine and 10 or two and five, not five and four. You can be more specific 
and that's fine. You're not going to look foolish and everybody's going to know what's going on. <laughs> if you say, hey, it's a 2-5 turnaround, hopefully everybody would get it, but you just can't always be sure. So I, I just would rather put you in a position where you're extra clear, everybody knows what's going on, and the jam goes smoothly. From a soloing standpoint, right? How do we want to handle this? Well, you have a lot of different options. Normally, over the five chord and the four chord there, I tend to use the minor blues sound. And I can do the same thing over a two to five. I can still use a minor blues sound. However, theoretically speaking, this two five is in the key of G major. And so what you might want to try is an A Dorian scale. Okay, so from the A, it's the same as a G major scale, but it just starts on A. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. Okay, and of course as always, you know, I, I don't play in the basement too much. So I tend to play it up here. And you can play like A minor pentatonic, and then maybe like a D7 arpeggio, and then maybe the G major blues. There's a lot of different options. The, the, you know, there's a lot of options anyway, right? So the two to five specifically doesn't, it doesn't make it so that you have to do things differently. You can still play, you know, over that two five, you can still play minor pentatonic, right? You can still play the G minor blue scale. It's still going to work okay. Nobody's going to complain. If you want to get a little crazy with it, you could add in like some A Dorian or a little A minor pentatonic but then when it goes to the D7, your A, minor, your A minor pentatonics may not work as well. You may not love that. So you would have to be prepared to maybe go to like a D7 arpeggio or something that's got more chord tones in it. That would be the sound that would be more of what you're looking for. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. I don't want to, you know, go down the rabbit hole. Obviously, this is this is something you can you can really chase a lot and you could come up with a lot of different ideas. Obviously, being a 2-5 progression, from a jazz standpoint, two fives are kind of what it's all about. So if you were if you were the kind of person that studied jazz or listened to jazz anyway, you would you would likely have some two five ideas, some licks and some lines that you already feel comfortable playing. They would drop right in. They would they would sound great. All right. So this is this two five idea on bars nine and ten. This is just you know one of the seemingly thousands of, of subtle, slight variations that occur in a 12-bar blues. Um, I have, uh, I do have a course that, that covers this called How to Build Blues Songs, and it has all these different variations on the 12-bar blues, uh, as well as a bunch of different variations on the 8-bar blues, um, because there are a lot of them out there. And the more you learn these subtle little variations, the more you know, like when you hear them in a song, you recognize it. It's not like your ear's so good, you just recognize it because you've, you've played it. Um, and that's really how that how that comes to be. So I'll, I'll try and remember to leave a link near this video uh, for that in case you're interested. Uh, and as always, I hope you dug the video, hope you learned a little something out of it. I'll try and get back at you soon with another video. Uh, like I said, maybe with that 6251 idea that, that can often follow this. Uh, but for now, play around with this. And uh, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I will see you soon. Take care.